How's it going, everybody? We welcome you to episode 87 here on Hawaii Football. Now, your guys, Jordan Hilly, Hunter Hughes, back with you. As usual, we got our guy, Jonathan, on the controls as well, making sure this thing uh, stays on the straight and narrow. Got a fun episode lined up for you uh, as we record this on Wednesday, April 26th. A little later start time than our usual, like before dawn uh, call time. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. Uh, so I uh, got to get a few things done before the pot this week uh, and, of course, set to release this midday on Thursday, April 27th. Again, episode 87 here on Hawaii Football Now. We are excited coming up uh, in just a little bit. We are going to have a conversation um, with Coach Cody Cook for from the University of Hawaii Football Program. This is kind of his time uh, as we are in the meat of the offseason, handling the weight training, the conditioning um and uh if you talk to anybody around the program uh a lot of good positive things to say about coach cook and the uh the results i think that he has produced um and a guy i know that uh you've gotten to know hunter i think one of the craziest things and i was thinking about this as i was just kind of prepping the notes for the he's like one of the longest tenured coaches on staff uh he got here in 2020 but you know i mean like coach yoro's been here for a while coach abe's been here for a little while uh there's some other other folks that, you know, support staff and things like that. But really, because of, you know, some of the turnover and whatnot, uh, Coach Cook, who came in under uh, Todd Graham when when Coach Graham was the head coach, um, he'd been here for a while now uh, <laughs> and uh, is one of the veterans, if you will, on the uh, Hawaii coaching staff. But, man, he's he's really done an impressive job. Yeah, uh, along with Coach Chris Brown, if you have anything uh, not nice to say about Coach Cook, you best uh, keep him to yourself. He's a large individual. <laughs> And uh, you don't want to catch those hands because they're they're quite large. Um, but uh, yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, Jordan. Uh, in my mind, probably one of the the better things to come out of the Graham era, uh, without throwing too many stones in that direction. Uh, Coach Cook's been a phenomenal addition for us, and uh, the strength position coach. It's it's usually unheard of for them to jump. Uh, coaching regimes normally um, each era brings in their own guy from their other school with their own philosophy and so for coach cook to now be under two coaching um, regimes uh, I think says something to his talent Mm -hmm. uh, his trustworthiness with the guys um, and uh, yeah just what he means to this program it's uh, I it I, I I don't know if we can say enough about him because uh, that that's kind of rare in this business. Um, and uh, yeah, just a great guy. And uh, stoked we get him on the pod today. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I mean, you know, it kind of goes without saying with every position, but I think you're right with football coaches that or head coaches that that move around like they're very particular about very. their strength and conditioning guy because they know how important it is, right, and how how much time they spend with players. Um, you know, we talked to Coach Sheffield last week. He's one of those rare guys on staff where, like, he works with everybody as a special teams coordinator. Uh, you really have that as the fact of the matter if you're the strength and conditioning coach. The dude played at Oklahoma and Tulsa. Uh, coach Cook, that is. He he knows big time football, uh, and and he's been he's been quite impactful uh, in his time with the Hawaii football program. All right, no, without further ado, uh, let's get to that conversation in the game time with Coach Cook, but before that, I want to remind everybody that Hawaii Football Now is brought to you by Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. As Hawaii's largest credit union, they are committed to serving individuals and businesses through its 14 branch locations statewide and convenient digital banking services. As a leader in providing support for the islands, Hawaii USA is committed to strengthening Hawaii's financial wellness and sharing successes with members, local businesses, and the greater community. Visit HawaiiUSAFCU.com. All right, game time. Interview with Coach Cook coming up right now. All right, Coach. Hey, thanks for coming on, man. We know, uh, you know, it's like 1030 in the morning, but you've had like a full day uh, up to this point, uh, basically, uh, even though we're just a few hours into the sunlight. Uh, what's uh, we we know that this is kind of your time, man. It's it's the off season. The strength and conditioning program is in full gear. These guys are winding down the academic semester, get ready for summer. And before you know it, like full camp's going to be here. But uh, how are things going right now? And uh, what, what's the what's the program kind of looking like? Uh, things are going great right now. So we're kind of wrapping up our uh, post spring ball block. Uh, we kind of had a unique um, spring in terms of doing spring ball early, which uh, as a, it's kind of a strength coach's dream, to be honest with you. 
Um, so we had four weeks to kind of prepare our bodies mm-hmm. to get ready for, for spring ball and kind of what that looked like. And then we spent the last six weeks really just really, really honing in on performance. Uh, we had kind of see it as really trying to give these guys a better engine, more horsepower, more speed that we can go and, go and play with in the summer because summertime we're going to be really preparing them for, for fall camp, right? So kind of the field work, the position-specific stuff, all of that will kind of take precedence in, in the summertime. So right now it's really just been about – getting faster, stronger, more powerful, jumping higher, jumping further, um, and kind of taking that conditioning uh, aspect back a little bit, not really having to to be in shape for anything right this second, right? So, again, we'll have the summertime, uh, about eight weeks to be able to get mm-hmm. that done and get that into being football shape. Uh, it's good to have you put in the request to, like, permanently just have spring practice be earlier? Definitely. I have, <laughs> for sure. I'm definitely playing my cards that way So because this has been huge uh, for our guys to be able to – really just hone in on that, on that performance piece. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, coach, a um, couple guys that we're looking to have a big impact in this um, immediate uh, future in the, in the season coming off of injury um, with that kind of reorganization of the timeline. Do you see that being beneficial to the guys like Wyndon Holy or um, Jonah Pinoke, um in that rehab process? A hundred percent has been, you know, uh, Wyndon this whole six weeks has done a great job. I mean, haven't had any restrictions with him. He's really kind of blossoming in his own, um, really having a, a lot of just consistent training on top of himself. You can see those guys that, that really haven't, maybe haven't had a consistent training block early on. Now they have that, seeing him really develop and become a higher performer. And, and same with Jonah uh, as well, you know, getting him back in a consistent training phase and knowing that he's going to be very, very healthy this summer is going to be huge for his development on the field. Um, and again, knowing what some of those past injuries were and, and everything, like we're going to have some things in place where um, some extra needs and whatnot to make sure that we're, we can take care of his body, um, whether that be more posterior shoulder work, protect his shoulders and those types of things as well. Jonah's an old man by now. So uh, yeah. we got we to gotta do old man maintenance a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'm excited no, to see him back out there. Um, th- there's a ton of construction going on on campus right now. Um, maybe talk a little bit. Uh, this is kind of a twofold one. So are you guys doing your speed and um, your running work on the turf or the grass right now? That's the first question. And then the second question, the weight room is in the club gym right now. What, what What's that been like? Oh, oh man, That's, those are great questions. Uh, the first one, uh, we are on the turf right now. So we have the turf mm-hmm. um, through the end of this training block here. Summertime. We'll have to do some maneuvering around. I don't want to necessarily tear up the grass going into camp a ton. So, you know, if we can end up maybe using um, whether that maybe possibly like the softball outfield at times or or whatever it may be, but just trying to move around and try to protect our grass a little bit. Because I know, again, coach likes to practice on the grass. I like to practice on the grass and kind of move back and forth between surfaces. So we have that um, adaptability underneath us. Um, and then with Clum Gym, I tell you what, uh, I love Clum Gym and our guys love Clum Gym. Uh, no AC, um, just blaring the music. It's really just old school training. You know what I mean? And and they've really, really taken to that. It has been awesome. There's an echo feel in there as well. So when they take the room and they come in the room, it is as loud as it can possibly be. So it kind of brings a, a different energy to it. Uh, and again, we're going to be super fortunate with the new room uh, when that gets completed and everything. But, you know, uh, Clum Gym, we, have not, we haven't taken a back seat in terms of what the energy and enthusiasm mm-hmm. and the work has been. Um, I guess that's one, that's really one of the main things I love about being here and living here is it's just, it's blue collar. It's just go to work every single day and just keep stacking those days on top of each other. You know, like these guys don't need fancy things. They don't want fancy things. They like working in the dark so they can go perform, go perform under the lights on Saturday. You know, and I think that that's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. I think there's, there's a, there's a humbling aspect to having to like kind of, you know, get into the dungeon, if you will. Um, you, you don't have all the bells and whistles. Uh, you guys have been have, have to be super adaptive, and and I think you guys have handled that all really well. And it, it kind of leads me into we were we were talking about it, um, and you know just kind of going through the notes and whatnot, and and realizing that uh, you know at this point you're like one of the longest tenured guys on staff, just just based off of you know natural turnover and attrition and things like that. Has it has it felt like you've been here? I mean, it, 2020 is not that long ago, uh, but has it felt like you've been here for a while? Uh, I definitely feel seasoned here for sure. And it's a great, great feeling. You know, when I talk to recruits and, you know, we've had some unofficial visit guys come in and whatnot, and I really try to speak from the heart and be transparent, whether that's with our guys or recruits, whoever it is, 
Um, I just finished my 10th season of coaching, which is crazy to me because it doesn't feel that long ago that I was playing. Um, but the longest place I'd been was, was five years at Arizona state and having going on my fourth season here, you know, I love it here. Um, again, having been at some power five schools and whatnot, which were great experiences, but this is home for me. And I, I can truly say that and mean that because not only because of the university of Hawaii and what our kids are, but the state as well. And it's, it kind of takes me back to growing up and growing up on faith and family and understanding how important and, and how big of a centerpiece that is for the state and, and the kids that, that, that play here, that come here, the guys that have played here in the past. And that's what I want to be a part of. Um, so it's been super, I'm super, super blessed. I can't say enough about that. And my daughter being born here two years ago. So again, this is home. This is, this is her home and, and it's our home. And this will always be a huge part of, of our life for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and yeah, I mean, you've, you know, you've, you've played it you know, big time college football, you've coached big time college football. What, what have you kind of taken from those experiences from your playing time? As you mentioned, you know, a number of years coaching, even before you got here and, and kind of what have you taken and, and brought with you and kind of, you know, found out maybe what worked or what didn't, but, but what, how's that kind of influenced to where you're at now? Uh, the ton of influence just from the, the strength coaches that I've worked for in the past. Um, there's little bits and pieces of, of what they did in their program and everything. Um, that that's that's within our program right still being able to make it my own but there's some things that I liked or didn't like and and all that but uh, at the end of the day I really think the biggest thing I've brought is relationships and I think that that's that's the number one thing to me is um, I love the performance side of it obviously uh, strength training and speed and power and all that stuff but it's the relationships that I get to have with not just one position group but being able to have relationships with 120 kids on the team um, I'm able to see them almost every day of the year you know what I mean? I don't I don't really take a back seat in season either. I'm always at practice or, or we're training throughout the season, maybe obviously a little bit less than we are in the off season. But there's still that relationship piece. I'm able to kind of see them in a different setting outside of practice. So I kind of know what their vibe is that way or that day or that week or whatever it may be. So I'm able to have those one on one relationships because really, I mean, tell them all the time too. at, at the end of the day, this is not a four or five year relationship. This is something that, that to me means the most is going to be 15, 20, 25 years down the road is hopefully I've given you something in your life that's going to make you a better husband or a better father uh, or whatever it may be, because training, I mean, we're going to deal with adversity too, right? We're going to be able to put them through the ringer and, and conditioning and we're going to see them kind of go head on with adversity. And I want to see them be able to respond the right way and, and them knowing that they can take those tools later on in life when adversity hits and know that, you know, this isn't the end of the road. It's just a, it's just a, a hurdle and, and you'll come out better on the back end. Oh, that that's, that's awesome coach. Um, you know, one of the cool things about having a podcast like this is we have a ton of people in the community, not just season ticket holders, but business owners, people that have influence in the community. And so I wanted to present this to you, and it's something that you already know. It's tough to get the guys at a level with, in terms of training and nutrition that they need to be at the Division One level at University of Hawaii. Um, they uh, even scholarship athletes. Um, after rent and everything is paid, sometimes only have 400 bucks in their pocket to cover a month's worth of food and necessities. My question for you is when guys are needing to bulk up, when guys are needing to hit certain numbers for their nutrition and, um, and building, what is your strategy or what is your advice to them, um, to hit those numbers? Because it is extremely challenging here in Hawaii. Sure. No, that is certainly a challenge. That's a huge challenge. So, you know, it's really up to us and the strength staff and also using our position coaches as well in terms of education and trying to educate these guys, not only on um, what to eat and, and at what time to, to have those meals and things, but also how to shop and try to try to shop efficiently. Right. Like whether that be Costco or whatever it may be, there's certain there's certain certain loopholes we can go through. But again, it's going to be teaching them and. The greatest thing I like about that is it's also going to teach them how to shop and do those things later on in life um, when, when, whenever you might be struggling or, or whatever it may be, but to be able to save money and, and do those types of things. So really it's the education piece. And that's a, that's a daily thing too. We just got done talking to the team uh, yesterday, you know, like right now in the off season, we're with you eight hours a week or yeah, eight hours a week. So what are you doing with that time outside of that? Right. That's really, that's the most important is, we can be here for that meal that you get this day or whatever, may, or whatever it may be, but those other four or five meals you got to get in, here's a strategy in place that we can go and do those things from an effective and, and an efficient standpoint. Yeah. And, you know, besides showing up to practice, 
showing up to workouts creates that discipline in these guys that, I mean, I'll even be honest, is still the thing which gets me up in the morning, you know, from back at UH. Um, and that that is the power of a position like what you hold in your, your setting um, disciplines and um, mental decision making on a daily basis in these these guys. Um, what what does that mean to you? It it goes beyond football. Um, you mentioned it earlier, making these guys into into better men and better husbands. Uh, I I think the strength coach holds a unique place there besides just position coaches uh, for these guys. Right. No, that means that really means the world to me in general. Again, it's, it's being able to instill those disciplines. Um, they know that if the workout starts at 6 a.m., that we're all at the door at 5.55. They know that five minutes early is on time. And I think that that sets you apart. You know, it really does. You know, when you get into into work life after football and all of that, being early is being on time, right? You don't, want to be, you don't want to be that guy that shows up one minute late or two minutes late. If I'm always on that five-minute early schedule, then it's going to set me apart from, from a lot of people. And, uh, again, I think that that's, that's, that that's really what I take hold of. Um, but again, too, as a strength coach uh, and all of our coaches, we have to set the example too, right? I mean, if we have a 6 a.m. group, myself and, and our strength staff, we're, we're here at 445 a.m. setting up everything because I want to make sure that everything is set up the right way, the way it needs to be set up. So we're not, again, we're not wasting our kids' times either, but they know that, okay, these coaches are spending a lot of time on this program. There's a lot of detail behind what we're doing. Now all we got to do is bring the intent and take the coaching. So again, I think we have to lead by example, uh, more than anything, and, and they see those things. Yeah, I I, I hear that, man, and I, I think you, we we've seen that example set. Um, just kind of curious, you know, as you kind of got into the coaching profession, was you know this what you envisioned? Uh, was was strength and conditioning kind of you you knew that that was uh, your path forward? No, I didn't really know it until I was in my last season at, at Tulsa. And I was kind of thinking of what I wanted to do. I was already getting my, my uh, bachelor's in exercise sports science. So I knew I wanted to do something along those lines. But what I really loved was summer training always stuck out to me. You know, you're with your guys out there, you're conditioning together. It's the blood, the sweat. It, it's, it's everything that goes into it. And you're working for a common goal. And that's something that I really took hold of. And so I reached out to, to, to my strength coach at the time and, uh, ended up becoming a, I became a graduate assistant at Arizona State and kind of the rest is history. But this is really what, this is my calling. I really believe that. I think everyone has a calling. And this is my calling because, again, I'm able to impact 18 to 22 year olds. And I think what's great about that is a lot of these guys, it's their first time away from, from home. It's their first time away from mom and dad. So as much discipline takes place, um, you know, there's that, there's that aspect of trying to be that, that father figure in a way of trying to help them continue to build what their family has, has given them and what their family has instilled in them. And again, I think that that's really what drives me and what, what drives me in this profession. Yeah, man, that, that's, that's so true. Like the, the, the times in the off season with, with your guys. And, and speaking of that, you know, how, how, how have, um, you know, with the, with the new coaching staff coming in with, with coach Chang and, and, you know, everybody we talk to from the staff, I think have, have echoed similar sort of um, or similar sort of vision as to how to move the program forward. Uh, but, but how's that been kind of, you know, integrating everybody into, into the new culture, into, into coach Chang's leadership, but, but how's the experience been for you in, in working, you know, with the, the rest of the guys um, that are, that are currently on staff? It's been incredible. You know, I, I think that what's great about the staff in general is that we're able to sit down and, and have great conversations and, and really conductive conversations of how we can go get better. How can we as a staff continue to add value? How can we get our kids to add more value to our team? And they're just open conversations, you know, and I think that that goes a long way. Obviously, Coach Chang is going to make the decisions uh, at the end of the day. But again, being able to have, you know, us 10, 11, 12 coaches, uh, support staff and everybody just being able to kind of throw in their, their opinions and kind of where they're at or where their position groups are at. I think it's been uh, very, very conductive. And you can really see, you know, I see from, from last offseason to this offseason, this culture just really, really continue to grow and grow and grow. And what's great about it is now it's really it's really our guys' culture, our athletes, our, our kids, it's theirs now. You know, when they take the room, they know what the standard is, and they're helping making sure that everyone else is on the same page. They're making sure that the younger guys that may not quite know yet what those details are, they're making sure that they, they're following those details and those disciplines and whether it's feet off the white, snapping down on the ready, 
all those little bitty details that really add up, um, it's it's great to see our, our guys take kind of control of that. And, and it really means something to them at the end of the day. Hmm. Um, fun question for you, coach. Um, Hawaii travels more than any other team. Uh, this past fall, uh, Russell Wilson was widely covered for him doing lunges on that uh, plane ride over to, to England. Do you have a philosophy whenever the guys are on the plane with stretching, with, with doing anything like that? Uh, just always been curious from a strength conditioning yeah. uh, perspective, if you have a thought on that. Right. Uh, I think movement on the plane is good. So we'll try to get our guys to move around a little bit, not necessarily anything from a stretching or lunging standpoint. Um, you know, as you know, like we'll fly commercial a lot of times. So there's other there's other people on the plane as well. So I don't want to be too disruptive uh, on a plane. Um, but hydration wise, you know, we'll make sure that those guys have plenty of liquid IV in their snack bags, those types of things. Our big thing that we do, though, is when we get off of the plane and load the bus to go to the hotel, wherever we're staying, is before they can grab their room key, we have a 20 minute uh, ground based mobility session. All right. So basically some some yoga moves and things like that. And they were really just trying to get them to open back up. Right. You're sitting on a plane for six hours. Your hip flexors get tight. Your low back gets tight. So we really just want to try to open them back up. Um, so we'll do that as soon as we get off of the bus. We'll find uh, the, our big team meeting room, clear out the chairs. Everybody's on the ground. We're all locked in. Um, doing things the, the right way. And again, that's what I really love is there's never really a time where we're just kind of loosey goosey and just, you know, real, real talkative and whatnot. They're locked in and focused when it's time to work, whether it's it's stretching or whether it's time to go for a big back squat or whatever it is, they're locked in and their intent is, is absolutely out of this world. I love that, man. I might need to get the uh, the mobility 20 minute routine that's from you because I tell you what, man, sitting down at work for like one hour and my my hip flexors are shot. So uh, we might we might oh. hit you up after this, coach. No doubt. These position coaches love it. They hop in every time, too. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Uh, that is not surprising one bit at all to me. Hey, Coach, we really appreciate it, man. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. We, uh, we've we heard all the good things and and obviously observing it, too. And, and you can tell, by the way, that these guys are developing and, and whatnot um, in their performance. Uh, keep up the great work. Uh, we'll, we'll probably bother you again before, before season rolls around uh, as you kind of wrap up uh, – you know, the off season training and uh, we get into the excitement of the, of the season as well, but uh, can't thank you enough for taking some time out of your day. Awesome. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Much love, bro. Have a good right. one. Yep. You too. See you guys. Thanks coach. Yep. This is Hawaii football now from ESPN Honolulu. All right. Big thanks to coach cook uh, coming out of the halftime break. We head into the second half. Uh, a lot of different things to talk about. Um, we will have a longer conversation probably next week because, bruh, Aloha Stadium is like constantly in the news now. None of it for any positive reasons. More delays, reductions in size, excuses, things. Yeah, I, at this point, it's like I'm just kind of like, what's the point? Uh, wow, and wow, so I just wanted wow. to mention, just wanted to kind of just mention it real briefly. We're not blowing it off, but it's like, well, there's not a whole lot of positive to talk about. So we'll just save it for next week because you know what? That was a fun conversation with Coach Cook. And we'll just make that the focus of this week's episode right. with some other stuff going on. No, that, that's exactly right. Uh, don't need to poke each other and trigger us just yet. We'll wait for next week to get triggered. Let today just be uh, another good Wednesday on Hawaii football now. Yeah, yeah. We're in a good mood after the interview. It's like, let's just uh, yeah. let's save the... Um, the frustration for next week. We'll come ready to go uh, when it comes to that and Aloha Stadium. Uh, speaking of good vibes, man, um, as we get into the second half here, this kind of gives us an opportunity. Uh, I know you uh, are a frequenter on the links, obviously. That is something that has come up on this humble podcast many of times. But uh, you, you had a fun little fun little group outing uh, over the weekend. Is that uh, is that correct? It is, yeah. I played with uh, QB1, Braden Shager as well as Jake Farrell. So uh, it's kind of the battle of the redheads, if you will. Um, but uh, no, the, the the boys can uh, knock it around a little bit. Oh, I yeah? Especially they, they Jake, can play? man. Um, I double bogeyed the last hole and came within a shot of Jake Farrell beating me, man. Like wow. straight up. So um, yeah, they're, they're competitors. And uh, for uh, I learned that both of them uh, – I think Jake being a senior doesn't have class on Mondays and, uh, doing, and then uh, Braden is just online on Mondays. So Monday's a golf day for them and they, uh, they get out there 
um, as much as they can. So they're playing more than I am right now, Jordan, to be honest. So uh, I got I got to be ready to go next time I play with those guys. So a lot of fun. We'll probably do it again and put it on old shakas and swings one of these days. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Do you do they uh, they bring the ball out? You know, just like there's a lot of open space there on the fairways, you know, maybe just get a couple of throws in um not tearing up the course or anything like that but you know spin it around a bit because those two guys can spin it man yeah totally that that, that's a great question uh i've always thought that that would be a great way to stress relief during during like tournament time uh because you're waiting on different holes yeah you're waiting on that yeah um spin the rock a little bit but uh those guys were a little bit more uh focused on snapchat uh between between shots i mean they're still in college so uh they've got their personal affairs to look after uh whenever oh, man. they get back from the course so yeah, that makes that makes me feel old they yeah. gotta they gotta keep their snapchat snapchat streaks going and that's they right. gotta keep up their appearances man I, I i get it i get it um no that's that's that sounds like a lot of fun that's pretty awesome um and uh you know the the qb golf outing man that's uh that's good stuff uh and yeah we, we gotta get that on the episode of shockers and swings um mm-hmm. uh going forward uh, so so pretty cool there, Braden Shager, uh, friend of the show mm-hmm. here on Hawaii Football. Now we, we got to get Jake on at some point too. We'll, we'll, yeah, that'd be cool. We'll bug him at some point during the summer. They got the Mondays, maybe Mondays. We'll get him on. You know, since since uh, you know he doesn't go to class on Mondays because he doesn't have class. He can't days. duck out of it. We know his schedule now. Yeah, we know his schedule now, so that's all good. Um, <clears throat> transitioning here, let's uh, let's get into some of your comments before we close out this week's episode. A um, lot of fun stuff. Uh, we've been getting a lot of comments over the last few weeks, especially with some of the interviews, which I, I, I think you guys enjoy. Um, our guy, Jason, uh, who lives up in Vegas, uh, had commented um, on Facebook a, a few times over the course of the season. Um, a guy who takes some regular road trips. He, he was uh, checking in and uh, really cool to hear from him on Facebook. Once again, he was he's pumped about Mike Alejado, the commitment from from Gorman and obviously right there uh, in his current backyard up in Vegas um he said he it, loving the the fact that he's recruiting other players to stay home with him uh and he's already got his road trips planned he's uh he's going up to Oregon um early September for the Hawaii Oregon game uh he's going to be there when Hawaii goes up to play Vegas late September uh so he's he's pretty pumped and he, he said he's especially pumped to see some of these young defensive players um which is like the the quintessential Hawaii fan right like we love the run and shoot we love points. We love throwing it in the air. Uh, but at the end of the day, like like a Hawaii football fan just wants to see like contact. They want to see like they they want to see uh, they want to see some hard hitting defensive players. Like that's that's sort of at the bones, I think, of Hawaii football fans. Uh, and, and pretty cool stuff. So uh, shout out to our guy Jason up there in Vegas. Yeah, uh, people want to see see people bang out here, Jordan. Um, that's kind of stereotypical to the the Polynesian style of football is may not be the biggest or the fastest but man they're 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 ready to hit um and again really really cool to see this gorman pipeline just being enriched and strengthened um not just on the defensive side of the ball but on the offensive as well so um very cool and hey jason thanks for the comments uh real quick um shout out to uh braden shager's dad actually i Mm. learned a religious listener of uh and watcher of our episode so nice mr shager um much aloha we're we're, we're thankful you uh tune in every week man aloha. Oh, that's awesome yeah yeah shout out to mr shager that's awesome uh and excited to see uh Braden continue to keep getting better and better uh, as we saw as the season progressed last year uh we'll go to youtube uh we got pastrami lover 101 uh the handle which might be our best handle so far um of uh, any of the commenters uh, and he was basically saying, man, he's uh, he's pumped with the run and shoot. And he feels like, um, you know, kind of echoing what we had a couple of episodes ago. You know, the momentum was building the yeah. that 2019 season. And obviously, um, <clears throat> you know, Rolo taking the Washington state job, the transition there and then COVID just kind of, you know, handcuffed a lot of things, but he's saying, you know, if, if you can get that one solid season that can really, really be the difference maker in terms of of making a huge leap um you know one one decent season can really springboard you uh and it doesn't have to necessarily be incremental uh i think in the improvements that's pretty cool stuff there and uh shout out to pastrami lover 101 
good stuff. Yeah. Um, man, um, you got to be a certain type of uh, individual and certainly a certain level of confidence to uh, put pastrami lover one-on-one as your, your, your handle, but uh, Hey, much love and respect. Uh, maybe head on down to Giovanni Pastrami, good friend of our show with ESPN Honolulu. Yep. Um, yeah. If, if you're in town, go, go check those guys out. Cause you'll probably love that as well. Over there, there we go. Good plug. <laughs> good plug there as well. Um, and, uh, going back to the YouTube comments, our guy, Al from VA, never a shortage of ideas. Uh, gave a shout out to Scotty Atkinson as well. Who's, who has entered the portal. I love that. He's just like always, he's always in the lab. Al, Al's always in the lab. He's like, man, uh, can, can we use Eon as he calls him? Eddie, he'll say Katia. He's like special teams, edge rusher, uh, use him in the return game. He's like in Matt Shipley, throw the ball um some fake punts or whatnot what was it it was it last he ran on a fake punt right kind of late in the season was it you remember that matt shipley uh like deep in their own territory just saw it had the read and he's like i'm gone uh which may or may not have been a little um a little dicey uh but he made the perfect read because it was absolutely the right call in terms of schematics but you know he was like on his own 20 uh so you never know you never know what they've got up their sleeves uh pretty good stuff there and yeah i mean if you've got a dude who runs like a you know, world class hundred meter time. The return game might work out well. Just hit the crease, man. No, no dancing. Just hit the crease and run. Uh, there may be something, something there. So, no, I, I think we saw last year. You know, there's um, there's a lot of potential with this special teams unit. Um, and they're they're looking to be more explosive, uh, in the return game. And so, yeah, if you've got to do that, can run like the wind. Um, that may work out well. Totally. Um. Even the guys on the team, uh, guys like Shager and and Farrell, because I was just talking with them, they're, they're excited for this uh, this Eon guy to come in here, and um, time will tell uh, if he's able to catch the ball. But uh, I would love, 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 love Jordan for us to keep him as much of a secret as humanly possible. Yeah. Where we just put him in with special packages or. Uh, special personnel and allow him to kind of be that diamond in the rough because um, my one worry with putting him on special teams is special teams is usually where you get banged up. And so, yes, he could be uh, an asset to us in the return game, but um, I think his skill set could be maybe perhaps better used on go routes. So I I want to keep him as safe and healthy as long as possible. But again, all of that is yet to be determined and uh, yet to be seen this fall. Yeah, it's definitely a fun piece to maybe mold and see how they can best use. Uh, Al from VA was uh, also mentioning, you know, the the full, I thought it was pretty interesting as well, the comment from Coach Sheffield talking about, um, you know, to get like an Aussie kicker or punter guy out from Australia because yeah. they're so good and they're such high demand. Um, like they nobody's walking on anymore. Like if you're getting one of those dudes from the, the Academy or whatever it is, the, the, that like pipeline from, from Australia, like it, it takes a scholarship. Um, and that's, that's not a Hawaii thing. That's like a college football thing, right? These guys are in such high demand, supply and demand. You can't just get one of these guys to walk on anymore. Yeah. Um, they know their value and that, that value is for full ride. Uh, and so, you know, and as coach Sheffield said, you know, they're, they're pretty um, set right now in terms of, the depth chart, uh, but in the future, we'll obviously be looking to replace some of these veterans. But in, in the interim, they that's not necessarily been one of their recruiting priorities because of the the quality that they have right now in the building, including with guys like Matt Shipley, uh, Ben Falk, and whatnot. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting, though. Like, it's, it's amazing how much that has developed with Australian kickers and punters. And obviously, Hawaii's had their fair share, going back to Matt McBriar and, and a number of other guys, you know, before and since. But, yeah, it's they, they, those... It's they're hot commodities, man. It's the, I think the secret is officially out of the bag, Jordan, where they they know what they're getting with these guys. It's not mm-hmm. just kickers. It's not just a specialist, but you're getting athletes out of them uh, who are multifaceted. And um, yeah, I think the word is out also on the other side of things for Australian athletes of, hey, you want to come and uh, play collegiate sports in the U S like this is a, a great route and a proven route that a lot of other guys similar have uh, been successful at. So um, I love talking shop like that with 
with coaches and, and getting that insight into kind of what goes into the recruiting process. Um, and yeah, even just the kind of dividing and um, attributing of scholarships to each position group, I'm sure they have to be extraordinarily mindful there. And until um, Shipley leaves, they, they have to be mindful of spending another scholarly on another specialist. So um, that that's the kind of stuff as I'm sure you, you as well, Jordan, as a college player, it's really fun to talk that with a coach. Yeah, it really was. Uh, one other comment from Al uh, uh, making the pitch that uh, at least one UH game each year should be at Maui's War Memorial Stadium. You know, no arguments here uh, from the Maui guys. Uh, so I just, I, I just thought I'd squeeze that in as well. Yeah. Uh, love it, Al. Um, all right, a uh, quick little two-minute drill overtime before we head out of here. You got the draft this weekend. Uh, Bryce Young going number one. Who you got? I think it's going to uh, actually be C.J. Stroud from Ohio State. Ooh. And I'm not buying all of this. Um, mumbug schmung, schmumbug of uh will levis yeah me neither. Me neither. i'm not buying any of that me neither man uh should be fun we'll, we'll have a chance next week to talk a little bit more about the draft where we react uh try not to get too much in the prognostication business uh when it comes i love the draft uh, um but yeah. uh we'll, we'll wait and see uh hopefully the bears do well at number nine uh that'll be that'll be a big piece big, and rogers big, big, big is out of the north that's rogers right that's right the rogers north. trade man um, thank god Woo. Get all him these out years. There. All these years, man. All right. That'll do it for us. Big thanks to Coach Cook for joining the show. Shout out to Hunter and Jonathan as well. Big thanks to Spectrum Mobile Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union for once again sponsoring this episode of Hawaii Football. Now that'll do it for us on episode 87. We'll see you next week, everybody. You've been listening to Hawaii Football Now with Jordan Helley and Hunter Hughes, all from ESPN Honolulu.